Hi, and welcome to Community Connections, the show that brings education with real life learning for our students. Today, we're at Gulf Coast Federal Credit Union with Mrs. Betty W. Mixon. Hi. Hi. Thank you for joining us today. You're certainly welcome. Well, before we get started, can you tell us a little bit about the services that Gulf Coast Federal Credit Union brings to the community? Sure. Gulf Coast Federal Credit Union was organized in 1951, and basically it was organized for the city of Mobile and the county employees. Uh, Gulf Coast Federal Credit Union changed its name in 1985 to become a community charter so we can extend our services to the entire community. Now we have all kind of uh, loans, we have savings accounts, and we have just about anything that will help you with your financial needs. Well, that's great to know because today we want to talk about some of the financial needs that parents should take for their students. What should, what should they do? I mean, if they're having a, a child and uh, they have a brand new child, brand new infant, what are some of the steps that they should first think of when planning for that child's future? Well, basically, uh, we have seen a lot of our parents come into the credit union and what they will do at birth is open their account because they are issued, uh, the child is issued a social security card at birth. So they basically come in a lot of times and open the account and bring in the birth certificate and go ahead and set that account up. Okay, so they've set their account up. Now the child is entering into elementary school. What's the next step? The next step is to tell that child the importance of saving money because we have gotten into a situation now to where the child thinks that every dime that they get, they should go and spend it, but they need to be trained that that is not the way to go. That's a good point to make because they're starting to learn about money in the classroom around that time. So should the parent, when they come in to withdraw or deposit, would that be a good time to talk to a child? That would be an excellent time. The parent, uh, a lot of time, will bring the child in the credit union with them and, uh, and then the, the child will see what they're doing and that is saving money. And at that time, the parent can even give the child the money and tell them to go put this in mommy's account or daddy's account. And that is the beginning of showing them how to save money. It's also the beginning of giving them money, which brings us into probably about middle school when they might be getting an allowance or they're getting uh, money for good grades. How should you set that child into motion? Should they open up their own account at that time? Well, basically their account is open. It's open at birth and they can use that same account. And uh, they should be taught when they get a, an allowance or they get something for their good grades. If they don't bring it all and put it in their savings account, at least put half of it into a savings account so that they can uh, have that money when they need something or if they want something, a pair of shoes, they don't have to run to mama. That, that would teach them that, uh, that they have their own money. It's nothing like having your own money. Even we as adults would love to be able to just walk into a financial institution and uh, just withdraw money instead of every time we go in, we borrow money for things that we really need. So the child basically um, will learn a lot if the parent would just uh, work with them and show them uh, how to save money. I have a grandson, and I hope uh, it's okay to say that, but I have a grandson and uh, he helps his granddaddy uh, clean up building. And uh, his granddaddy give him $50 a month. His money goes straight to his savings account. And uh, he'll tell you, put it in my savings account. And then, you know, he's, he's saving to get something. Right. So that's what parents and grandparents need to do. Show that child how important it is to save money and uh, so that they will have something when they really need it. And you can never start too early. You can't start too early. I think that's a great example because a lot of parents are worried if they should give an allowance or how should they feed that and teach their children how to save. So just helping around the house or helping a relative, that money can go towards uh, their own account. That's right. It can go to their own account. Which is perfect and it's going to lead us into the the big time money, high schoolers, and where they earn their own. So when we get back, can you tell us and explain to us what they should do once they start their own job and they get that real paycheck? I will do just that. So what did your child eat at school today? Well, if you're looking for answers, we have them right here. I'm Suzanne Yates, the Food Service Director for the Mobile County Public School System, and I would like to invite you to join me for Cooking with Class, the child nutrition show from the Mobile County Public School System. 
Come with me as I go into the school cafeterias and talk to the folks who prepare the meals daily for our children. Join me as we go cooking with class. Nonviolence will start with me. Nonviolence will start with me. All across the Mobile County public school system, students are taking the pledge. I pledge to accept the responsibility of my actions. To solve problems peacefully. Respect myself and others. The 100 Days of Nonviolence Pledge is an initiative to help explore alternative means of stopping violence among school students. Will you take the challenge? Get involved. Take a stand. 100 Days, 100 Ways. So, Nicholas, how was your day at school today? It was great. We had fun in class today. So, what did you do differently today at school? I mean, anything? Any new projects? We got a progress report today. You got your progress reports today? So, how did you do? Uh, don't know. You don't know. That's okay. We can check that right here. Wow. Nicholas. Hi, we're back to Community Connections. We're talking finance with Miss Betty W. Mixon today. And we left on the note of high schoolers because they're going to be starting their first jobs. What are some of the advice parents can start with the high schoolers in that first paycheck? Parents should start to tell their children when you get your first paycheck, remember you have a savings account. We want you to learn how to take, if not all of that money, and put it into your savings account, then you need to take some of it there. Now, uh, children and young adults, they have savings accounts as far as certificates are concerned, uh, and they still have savings bonds, which the parents usually take out for the children, and they have to stay uh, however long is designated for that savings bond, but that's a good adventure for them to explore also. But the, the uh, certificates of deposits, what they can do is put money in their regular savings account because there are certain amounts that you have to have in order to get a certificate. As they get enough mm -hmm. money, $250, some $500, they need to invest that in a certificate. That way, that, that way they will have uh, more interest on their certificate and they will see their money really, really grow. And then that's when they will get excited. When they say, wow, I have $500 and now I've got 600 <laughs> just by letting it sit there. And then they will be able to, uh, it gets in their heart. So patience is the key with your high schooler because of course they see that $500 and they think, ooh, right. items and spending and mall. But patience is one of the, the one thing that you want to tell them if you wait and invest, right. it will grow. Exactly. If you tell them that and they see their money grow, they'll be just like us as adults. How do we feel when we see our money grow? Exactly. We are excited about that and they will be excited. It all comes down back to the parent though. The parent has to be the one to initiate all the training on learning. That's a good, good segue into our next point because if they've done their job as a parent, then they should be okay going into college, but that doesn't always happen. What usually happens when they're going into college and they're inundated by credit cards? Well, the first thing they say is, wow, I got a credit card. <laughs> That's the first thing they say. Right. And uh, it's okay if they stick with one, okay. but it's unfortunate that once they get one credit card, they start rolling in. Mm. And then when you look, they have so many credit cards that they cannot function on their grades. Their wow. grades start falling behind because they're worried about how am I going to pay all this? Wow, what have I got myself into? Right. They have just intimidated with credit cards and they really need to be trained that credit cards are not the way. Exactly, and especially when they go to the mall and put a record, well, they don't do records anymore. They put CDs or uh, small items on the credit card that gains interest and they end up spending um, $25, they end up spending some $50 on one item. Right, exactly. I had a conversation with a young lady when she went into college. She uh, had a credit card and uh, I, I saw the credit card bill and I told her, I said, uh, this is not good. And her thing to me was, well, the payments are only ten dollars. Well, that's okay. But then when you get another one, that's another ten dollars. You get another one, that's another ten dollars. And when you look, they're overwhelmed with debt. Debt is not 
a joke. Would this also be a great time to talk to the student about their credit? That will be an excellent point because uh, if you don't have good credit, you can't go anywhere. They need to be taught like we were taught, that a credit, credit means a whole lot. Our four parents taught us those things and they did not hurt us when we got uh, grown. That's true. So they need to be taught that so that they won't fall into uh, the devil's hands with <laughs> credit card debt. Um, credit card debt is, um, is something that, uh, again, it starts with the parent and it should be trained in, to me in some high schools before they go off to college. It would be an excellent thing to put that in the high school so that they will be prepared because it's going to hit them. Good point. They're Good gonna, point. It's going to hit them. And once they start using that credit card is, one, is when they start building a credit history? That's when they start building a credit history. And uh, it is so unfortunate that they have that history they decide that they want to get out of college, buy a house, right. they want to buy a car, right. and they're just plain old stuck. They can't get anywhere because they have really made a bad record for themselves. Bad credit is a bad thing to have because in this day and age, credit rates are determined by credit scores. Wow. And uh, a bad credit score we get your bad credit rate. I have actually seen some credit uh, rates be as high as 50% wow. because of a bad credit score. Mm. So this is why they need to know. They will have to have credit eventually. Right. They want, gonna wanna buy a house, they're gonna wanna buy a car, they're gonna wanna do a lot of financials, uh, uh, dealings with, with life in general. Mm -hmm. But they're not going to be able to, to really ever pay it off well, because they're gonna be stuck. I think you pointed out some great lessons because that's the key. The parent wants to make sure they raise their child to be independent and to start off on the right foot. And I think with the lessons that you've talked to us to about today and pointed out, I think if they follow that, they'll be on the right track. I think they will too. It wasn't bad for us. We did pretty good because we followed what we were taught. Exactly, mm -hmm. and we just need to pass it on. Exactly. Which is what we're doing today with Community Connections. And I want to thank our guest, Ms. Mixon, for joining us. You're certainly welcome. And the Gulf Coast Credit, Credit Union for letting us come in today. It's been a pleasure, and we hope to take the next segment and teach children about going into a store and actually using the money that they make. So thanks again, and we'll see you in a few minutes. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto-sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov kids for tips and information. So what you want to do is, have you already enrolled? You're doing fine. Mm -hmm. Oh, did that just fail? Select, Select the drop-down menu again. Okay. Oh, you're already enrolled. Oh, Example here, so mm -hmm. don't panic. <laughs> you're ready to make your payments. Mm -hmm. There it is. Oh my god! Oh. I really can't believe it. <laughs> That's awesome. Good for you. <laughs> We're back on Community Connections. We just got through talking about how to invest money, how to talk to your child about money, and now we're gonna talk about his or her's favorite part, spending money. So we're gonna to talk today with Richard Cow from Target, and he's gonna tell us a little bit about Target and their great educational programs. Well, first off, we have um, several different programs. One of the first things we do is um, we have our volunteer program, mm -hmm. uh, where we go out into the communities, the schools, and so forth, 
um, and help with anything that's needed. We've done lo uh, library makeovers, uh, playground makeovers, and, and different things like that. That's great that you invest back into the community. Why do you think that the Target Corporation wants to do something like that? Well, we're going into the communities and we're hiring um, the team from the communities right. and we just want to give back to those areas that we're in. And we appreciate it. <laughs> so because we know our students from our schools come here and shop all the time, Richard, can you tell us some of the key things that students look for, especially for that holiday gift giving event that comes up in a parent's life? Yeah, well the first thing is is that, you know, there's all the infomercials out there, all the commercials, the TV, um, all the influences that, that our children have. Right. Um, and the newest, latest, and greatest things, of course, we have. So they're always in here trying to, to find them and buy them. And um, a perfect example is PS4 is coming out. Wow. Uh, it's supposed to be the, the greatest graphics and everything else. So I'm sure they'll be in looking for that. Yeah, and I think we're standing in the most popular part of the store, which is electronics, because that covers from K to 12, which our students cover the mark on. And you guys offer everything for every price range? Absolutely. We have um, the change-ups over at the Skylanders uh, that just released this week. Um, it's been a huge hit. That starts around $9, and it goes all the way up to the iPad, too. So, Richard, we know that you're in the business of selling, and how can a parent help their child to buy smart? Well, the biggest thing is just watch the ad papers, um, compare, um, look at the, the other retailers online, um, because we do match those printed ads. Which is great to know, because everyone has a different price range when buying, and one thing that Target offers is you have your own products, well, we have Tar Target branded merchandise, okay. uh, which gives the consumer the option of either buying the branded kind or the um, Target branded kind, which there is a little bit of a savings there when you buy our brand. Which is great to know when the students come in because they may not have as much money as their parents. Exactly. <laughs> that is <laughs> But correct. they can still get the same type of product? Yes, absolutely. Good to know. Yeah. So we've kind of covered K through 12, but we also have um, the aftermath, college. What are some of the things that some parents can come in for their graduating high school senior going into college? What are some of the things they might want to well, check into? Here, they, we set up a whole section just for back to college. Um, we have all the dorm essentials. We have the refrigerators, the, the microwaves. Anything you want, we have. Um, and again, it's all in one central location in the back of our store and everything they could even desire is there from setting up their dorm rooms with different motifs or whatever is there as well. And that's good. So one of the smart shopping tips you're saying is make sure you check those papers for discounts and coupons. Correct. And then also in the store for what, what do you call it when they're all in one section? Uh, one, one particular item like the college when you keep it Well, in we, we have different seasons okay. um, and that's going to be our back to college season. Um, for, so for, seasonal the, for the seasonal section. The same thing for back to school, for the, for the K through 12. We have the back to school area as well. And then another thing that's really huge right now mm -hmm. is all the electronic type apps and stuff right. that everybody's using. There's so many saving tools. Um, tar Target has what we call Cartwheel, and there is tremendous savings with that. Um, you just sign up for it, and there's um, all kinds of discounts on it. Like right now, um, there's a uh, you can save up to, up to 30% on certain Halloween items just by using Cartwheel. Oh, that's good to know. And you also have something sort of the Target card, a uh, credit debit card? We have a Target charge card and we have a Target check card. Um, it looks just, works just like your regular charge card or check card or debit card with your bank. Um, no fees, no interest, no nothing. Um, and every time you buy something with it at Target, you save 5% and then we give 1% back to a school of your choice. Ah, so we really want to promote that for our students. That's a perfect Absolutely. gift for a high school student too. Absolutely. So you don't have to worry about them running up the charge card. What's on the card is what it's, they spend. That is absolutely correct. And the best part about it is it goes back to education. Yes, it does. Which is what Target is all about. And we really appreciate you talking to us today, Richard, and letting us come into the wonderful world of Target. And we will be right back with more saving tips for our children. So, Nicholas, how was your day at school today? It was great. We had fun in class today. 
So what did you do differently today at school? I mean, anything, any new projects? We got a progress report today. You got your progress reports today? So how did you do? Uh, don't know. You don't know. That's okay, we can check that right here. Wow, Nicholas. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. Hey, going out like that? Yeah, why? Well, um, what would the neighbors think? <laughs> I see you! Come look at Mr. Feather! Yay. Look what I have. Mr. Bird, remember? Bark, bark, bark! We're just playing! We're just playing on trying to get you out of here! Even still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Well, that concludes another edition of Community Connection, where we learned about financial education for your student, whether it's saving or spending wisely. Join us again next week for another edition of Community Connection. Thank you for viewing. There is a remarkable change taking place throughout the Mobile County Public School System. It gets you out of your normal comfort zone. It makes you think, you know, outside of your um, box. To see it, one would only have to visit any one of the 12 high school's advanced placement programs. Just learning, like, the good study habits. So I think it really will be a major benefit later on. The Advanced Placement, or AP program, are high school courses which are designed and taught on a college level, which provides students with an academically challenging curriculum. The program is run and administered by the college board, which develops the curriculum, creates and administers the exams, and provides support for teachers. The AP program gives students the opportunity to take one or more college level courses while they're still in high school, and to receive college credit if they receive a passing score on the AP test. Once a student enrolls into the AP program, they are introduced to rigorous college level courses, which helps prepare them for their academic future. Uh, the courses are rigorous. They're taught at a college level. Uh, so students in high school are actually getting instruction at a college level. Uh, and so therefore it is, it is rigorous. It does require them to, to go beyond just rote memorization of facts and, and to move better to, uh, to critical thinking and, and to justifying their, their conclusions. I ended up um, receiving 16 credits from my AP classes in college. And so I'm now a complete semester, and actually because of the degree I am going to be receiving, I'm a complete year ahead of everyone else. So I'm considered a sophomore because of the AP credits I went into college with. So it's extremely helpful. And not only the classes that I took AP classes for and didn't take the exam, it was also helpful because I went into college knowing how to write good notes. I went in with many skills that a lot of students don't go in with because I had been taught here at Baker through AP classes that 
that college level class is a little bit more rigorous and it requires more reading and more time on your part. So I went in knowing that I had to prepare for my classes ahead of time. The Mobile County Public School System currently offers 22 AP courses through which high school students may earn both high school credit and college credit. These classes range from biology to physics to statistics. The advanced placement courses have been offered to the students of the Mobile County Public School System since the early 80s. What once started out as a program which was introduced to college-bound honor students is now open to all students of the Mobile County Public School System who wish to advance their studies. The, the program is open to anyone. Uh, there are no set requirements. We don't say you have to have this prerequisite or that prerequisite or this GPA. Uh, we know that the students uh, are told going in about the rigor there. It's not for those just at the very top, uh, but it is a very challenging curriculum. Each year the number of students enrolling into the AP program has grown. The latest results show between 2010 and 2011, the number of students enrolled into the AP program throughout the Mobile County Public Schools rose from 544 to 1,109. That is an increase of 151 percent. The number of students who have taken the AP exam and the number of students who have taken the exam and passed it with a three or better has also increased system-wide. And as far as going into college, already having that AP credit, because when you do take the um, courses, at the end of the course, you get the opportunity to take the exam, which could um, bypass and save you a lot of money as far as entering college, because if you've already taken the courses and passed the exam, you won't have to do that in college. And so um, that could save a lot of money with books that I won't have to pay for since I already have that credit. And so it's definitely going to help me in the long run. If you are in an AP class, you will sit for that exam in May. It's required. And it's actually paid for by the county, which has helped us skyrocket the number of students that are taking the test and the number of students that are passing the test. I will say the only thing that um, I want to add about the AP program is that it has a direct correlation with your ACT scores. Uh, taking one AP class in high school has shown a four point jump in your ACT score and taking at least three has shown a ten point jump in an ACT score. So getting these AP classes on campus increases the rigor through all of your classes and it's going to up those ACT scores, hopefully for our school and for the county. To understand the impact of the advanced placement courses, let's take a look at a few of the 2010 College Board numbers released for Mobile County. 89%. That's the average increase in qualifying students who have scored a three or higher on the AP test. 124%. That's the increase in scores of three or higher in STEM and English courses. 154%. That's the increase in the number of African-American students who enrolled into the AP program. 283%. That's the increase of the number of exams taken by MCPSS students in the past five years. The Mobile County Public School System strives to meet the needs of our diverse student population by providing an academic atmosphere of high expectations to provide our students with a 21st century learning environment. Through the Advanced Placement Program, students are challenged, pushed, and dared to think outside the box. This is just one way the school system is committed to educating students for the future. But it will take a collaborative effort of students, parents, teachers, and the community to help make our great public school system even greater. Nonviolence will start with me. Nonviolence will start with me. All across the Mobile County public school system, students are taking the pledge. I pledge to accept the responsibility of my actions. To solve problems peacefully. Respect myself and others. The 100 Days of Nonviolence Pledge is an initiative to help explore alternative means of stopping violence among school students. Will you take the challenge? Get involved. Take a stand. 100 Days, 100 Ways.